<laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? It's okay. when y'all finished up everything, you <laughs> killed all the spiders. You found the little secret door. It's a little about like a three foot wide stairway going down real tight. And there's a pinkish glow emanating from in there. As y'all stepped into the room, you could see the walls were very intricate with symbols and patterns, which I will share with you. Um, I'm so much happier to have seen that. This is the stuff that keeps me up at night. Yeah, it makes, it's just a, uh, it's very intricate drawing of uh, decadence and debauchery, uh, murder, sex, orgies, lust, drug use, all kinds of stuff going on. Anything is very excessive. The altar there technically... What you see is it's not that square altar like the picture, like a cruniform. It's like a big X pattern. Looks like the arms and legs are manipulatable, where somebody can be chained to it and it can be pivoted and adjusted. Looks more like a sex rack or something. Mm. Uh, there's a table beside it with very. This is just as y'all step in. You haven't gone in to search anything else. Uh, various implements on it, and then the statue in the back is similar to the one that's the. Uh, the taller creature in front of it is where this stone flows and where the pink colors emanating from. Like there's three chains holding it down in front of it and it's like floating, but it's being held down by chain. That's as immediately what you see as you walk in there. Can I do an investigation? I think I'm doing an almost involuntary investigation because I would be trying to take in the landscape. Is there anything specific you're looking for? Because a lot of this is very, very disturbing. Yeah, no, that's what I'm worried about is like I would be, tr I would be scanning it instead of like trying to avert my eyes from things like yeah, you're drawn to stuff yes everybody, everybody go ahead and make uh with all this porn now, saving throws y'all can throw in chat it only only skill checks do y'all need to put in the oh wonderful go plus one the, i'm assuming are you pulling the whole proximo from gladiator thing uh i'm actually more like just a farmer who got angry that his family was killed and picked up a mace i'm also sort of like seeking to die on my righteous crusade Okay, so your uh, just like wanton you know, acceptance of death and wanting it really has kind of steeled you a bit. So while disturbing, it's like, yeah, fuck it. Well, this is a whole lot of smut and debauchery. Anybody want to break the thing in the middle? I'd like yeah. to know if I know more about this than the rest of the hammer happy dingleberries. This is way beyond anything I don't know the specifics. I walk up and smack it, and then Bradley's like, all right, you don't even need to roll for insanity points. <laughs> Every time you hit it, you, you like gather another <laughs> D10. <laughs> <laughs> ting, 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 ting. I was going to say how action started to hit its life. <laughs> Uh, Y'all can move wherever you want to do and tell me what you're looking for. Or do you still want to generalize, like, hey, we're searching the room kind of thing? You tell me what, because there's a table or that, or that uh, thing with all the implements, glowing stone, there's the statue. I'm going to just kind of wander around the, the south side of the room, like trailing my hand along the wall of all the, the various carvings and, and paintings. It's a very odd feeling as you're doing it. So, of course, it feels like stone. Other pieces, as you touch them, feel like flesh. But you, and you move your hand Ew. quickly, and then you but you gener gently touch it again, and it's just stone. There's feelings of velvet. Some are wet, but then you check again. And, well, you're at the bottom of the stairs right there, so you, you're seeing there's several implements. Can't quite make them out, like on the table. That's uh, Fang will probably just uh, walk around the room and keep track of the the signs. Like he won't draw everything. Cause that would just take way too much time. He's gonna, you know, keep track of like signs and patterns that he sees. This horrible, like floating pink gem that's just irradiating the room with with badness. Is there a familiar energy or, or, or a wash coming from it that everything I would have sensed with my wife? Everything feels off. It doesn't feel clean in here. But the, at the moment, that's all you're getting is it's just this isn't natural or right. What do we see in the statue at the front of the room? From where you're at, it's more detailed. Like I say, the one picture I shared with the more feminine looking in a battle stance, mm. like the cycle, it's kind of like that, but it's got like crab like claws mm. or like well, they're reaching out to touch the stone, but they're not touching. So it. is that orb in the in front of it that you've marked? Is that the actual? Yeah, that's the actual um, the floating. That's the floating stone. It's got three chains like. Like holding, or I'm sorry, like, let's say two, one on each side. There. Um, are these skulls and bones on the map? Like, yep, actually, those, there's okay. several skulls and bones. There's Seth's going, looking, just kind of kicking at them. Can I uh, see if I might be able to tell how old, like how long they've been there? They look old. You don't know exactly how long, but they're well, older than a month. They got like dust settled on them. And are there any, uh, are they just skulls or is it? There's all ribs kinds and... of bones there, not just skulls, body parts, all, all bones, okay. femurs, rib cages. All Am I able to, to discern if they died like in the same manner? Do I find like a 
I don't know, like the same broken bone or rib or punctured skull. Nothing's the same. Oh. You see different cuts, uh, different break. Uh, doesn't look like there's anything okay. that's other than brutality. If I investigate the the big, like, messy table with all of the blood in the middle, do I get any, like, yeah, just, just what do I get if I'm just looking over the, the implements on this big altar? You want to hear it or you want to get where you're uh, No, right now... I was just thinking of like as I come up the steps. Right, so I'll come up the steps and just kind of bump forward to check this this massive Again, center of activity. As you're looking at those implements, there are various daggers or knives with different serrations. There's pliers. There's one thing. It looks like a bulb. Uh, give give me a history check. Damn, that's better than my plus one. Yeah, you know this. It's a medieval torture device. But the bulb. Pair of anguish. Oh. Jesus. If you don't know what it is, look it up. Oh, I'll Google that later. Yeah, in, basically, in it's it's bulb shaped with an end that you twist. Is it's, it's it's closed. It looks like a pear. You insert it in the anus, and then you twist it out, and it starts widening open. Called a oh. pear of anguish. There's also uh, have y'all all seen the movie Seven? Nope. Yes. Uh, the implement for lust that was used. There's one of those uh, big strap on that's actually a bladed. <laughs> Do I see? Uh, give me give me another. Uh, we'll say just for seeing. Sure. Any I guess, maybe yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. Nope. Roll another D10. This is just like <laughs> realizing why this is here is just like really. Tight. I added it. You're going to look up there and you see him like put his hand in his mouth kind of like that almost wanting to throw up. As you're up here now, you look over there. The reason you can tell that the light is pinkish light is it looks like there's flesh draped over <laughs> tight to it. Not just like hanging loose, but like it's been adhered to all the facets of it. Um, in, a, in a brief moment of clarity before I heave again, do any of the implements on the table look like they might make for a, a better or more brutal weapon than what I'm currently carrying? Definitely brutal. I, I was more thinking like a serrated dagger or something, but oh uh, no, there are there are some serrated daggers. I would like to collect a serrated dagger. Well, I already know what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna let Garrett go first. You will let me what? I'm gonna let you go first because I'm gonna start burning it all. We're, we're, we're leaving? No, I'm just letting you know. That's why I'm letting you do whatever you want to do first. Because as soon as I, as soon as Proximo gets his way, what are you gonna burn it with? Didn't didn't y'all use know. most, if not all, your oil? That was uh, I'll probably try to do it with a torch. Until then, I'll try to find something to set on fire. So in this this, room. this room's made of stone. Damn, I'll have to go get more oil. Even though we've totally cleaned out this town of oil. As you approach and you get close to it, there all of a sudden the surroundings change and you're like in an opium den. There's all kinds of beautiful women approaching you and, and rubbing your shoulders and like lay back and one of them's bringing a hookah over there and handing to you. Huh. And this is, this is something, it's reminiscent of area you knew growing up. I will now immediately take several steps back. Uh, well, this goes on. Everybody just sees you stop. You're still there to them, but it, you're right. basically, this is all happening in your mind. What do I see after he approaches yeah, the, the flesh-covered stone? And like he's looking at it, and then he just kind of stops, and he's got a, a slight sway to him, not exaggerated, but you can tell that he's like kind of out of it. Is there anything loose and non-pointedly lethal uh, near like, me on the table? Like a, a rock or a skull? Yeah, there, There's like blood. I'm going to throw a hammer at his fucking head. Yeah. All right, that's nice. Yeah, you just, you're like... Throw it, and it just sails right past him, clatters on the wall. Fuck! I'm gonna tackle him. <laughs> so, uh, Proximo, you see him pick up a hammer and throw it. Now, you don't see anything happening to Fang. You, the thing you notice, because Fang walks up there and stops. It's not like he can go further because of the statue. So, what you're witnessing is him walk up there and stop, and then Drake immediately pick up a hammer and throw at him. Maybe something's taking Drake over. Who knows? Yeah, I'm gonna tackle Drake. I'm gonna use my movement and just tackle him. <laughs> So, uh, are we in combat with no enemies? Yeah, that's what it feels like. Okay. So oh, we've got enemies now. Roll a d20 in your strength bonus just to see. I mean, because he could sidestep. So you see Proximo charging. Oh, no! That one! So you see him coming and you decide you're going to dodge where he's going, but you move directly into his path and yeah, he takes you to the ground. So you are grappled. Unless you're doing something else. Okay. Uh, Fiend, you're, different things are going on in your head. You're starting to like puff on this hookah and getting high. Women are taking care of you in ways you've never had taken care of. It's one of those, it's a mixture of revulsion, excitement at the same time. I want to be just like pummeling on the old man. Just like, let go. He looks like he's in a trance. Just fuck off. I'm just beating on your shoulders and whatever you have held against me. He starts that. I'm going to look up at Fang. Does he look like he's in a trance for my position? I mean, Y'all are wrestling on the ground. He's beating you about the shoulders. He's standing there. His like eyes are kind of glassy. There's that slight wobble. Not like he's drunk wobble, but you just tell that he's kind of 
not all there. I want to grab Proximo, like if if I can, like just get his face in front of mine for a brief second. Seth's running over and, here and trying and to it. separate you two. What the hell are you doing? Did Seth not see him chuck a hammer at Fang? Well, yeah, he did, but then he sees you run to attack him, so he thinks everybody's going crazy. He's not wrong. Yeah, I'll let I'll let Drake go. I'm not gonna like choke him out or anything. Yeah, so, so Seth's pulling you all apart. And so we're like, what? this place is driving us mad. Just everybody keep your heads together. I mean, I'm, I'm actually kind of fine. I, I, I'm actually going to go walk up to Fang. I'm just like, oh, hold. Just, before you get too close, Seth, stay back. I'm not going to get into details, but I've seen this happen before. I've seen my I saw my wife put someone under a, a spell. Anyway, they look like that. And I'm worried that what he walked up towards is doing it to him. If you get too close, I'm afraid the same's gonna happen to you. I don't know. Drake, you're the fastest. All right. If I stop in my tracks, throw another fucking hammer at me, all right? I'm gonna try and blast this masseuse fucker off toward the other wall. And if I can break him away from the stone, then we can figure out a plan. But I don't like what's happening to him right now. I'm gonna give him the okay. All right. I would just want to bull rush as fast as I can. Just like okay. plow into the center of mass on our our thing here and try and just knock him as far away from that stone as like so drake like he seemed kind of that rock and getting ready to run and he bolts and he is he takes his steps he just kind of slows down as he gets oh no i brought Seth with me (laughs) and he just kind of stops he's not doing anything same kind of thing and in, in your head drake you you're standing there at the door of your your home it's a beautiful day and you feel like a hand come over your shoulder like come on back to bed you turn around and it's your wife. And she just smiles at you. Everything's perfect. You're you're back home again. And she just takes you by the hand and leads you to your bedroom. You make love to your wife. And it's just totally enjoyable. And then you hear, Daddy, Daddy, come look. And you get up and you walk outside. And she's taught the family dog how to play fetch. And you're watching your daughter play fetch with the dog. You're just reliving this moment of joy in your life. Or Seth and Proximo see the same thing. He just starts his run and then just kind of stops. Slowly come, walks a little bit further and then... They're just kind of standing there. Yeah, I'm just going to hammer, rock, something heavy and hard. You can just pick up something off the table. Yeah. Pick up a, get a skull. Roll a, roll a D4. So you take five points of oh, damage. Oh, Christ. <laughs> that goes half my remaining health. And you just did five points of damage to him. You hit him like right in the head. And Seth's running forward. He's trying to grab you, and then you see him also stop. Oh, shit. <laughs> Because he's trying to grab you, but he's close enough. All of a sudden, the skies turn just gray and black. There's purple lightning happening. Uh, A wind picks up, and you just hear unearthly howling. And you see just these demons and stuff like what you've seen on the walls around behind you are rushing out and just reach up and start tearing your daughter apart. And you hear your wife scream, and you turn around as they're assaulting her. And at that moment, you come out of it falling to the ground with just being hit in the head. How clear can I take in my surroundings? Like, do I recall you're where right. I am again? You're, you're, you're right. You were, you're like, why did I stop running at him? And you're like, fuck, you're, you got a, this pain in the side of your head. You see like a blunt implement laying down on the ground beside you. And you look around, Proximo's kind of like, thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, I'm still got the okay slam again. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, like, you said do I, something. Do I, can I recognize the, the stance in Seth? Is it, it's similar to what our masseuse is doing? Yeah. And you kind of guess probably what happened to you. Okay. I'm going to stare at the floor and reach and try and grab Seth's ankle, drag us back toward the old the man. You should have like grab his ankle and knock him down on the floor. Yeah, you know, literally just like, I, I want to I want to keep my gaze away from the stone and I want to grab out towards the illustrious NPC next to me and just like flat out pull him off his feet to the ground and then just drag us backwards. Okay. And just like down back toward the, the steps where yeah, Proxima is, he, is, is he as, as much as I can. He like hits his head and stuff on the ground. He's like, oh, th- what? What the hell? Ugh. <laughs> and I uh, spit a little more like vomit that's still stuck in my throat out. Thing is you're having sex and getting high and then you're being cut open at the same time. While it's painful, it's also enjoyable. <gasps> you're also taking turns, you know, 
with the knife that you've been cut open with a bit, you're cutting someone else open with, and then you kind of snap out of it. And you look at them, you see uh, Drake's bleeding from the head, Seth's on the ground, and Drake's dragging, he got his leg in his hand, pulling him backwards. So am I standing over by them now? Yeah, No, you're standing where you're at. It's just oh. you've, you've now kind of popped out of it. I'm going to go over, and I'm just going to sit on the steps and uh, like uh, run just, you know, like frantically checking all the previous untenderized pieces of my flesh. You're checking your stomach and stuff and it's like, okay, okay, cool. That didn't happen. But it's fe it still feels like it actually did. Both of y'all give me uh, wisdom saves again. Brad. Brad. Oh, that's always fun. That was kind of traumatizing, especially yours, Drake. Thing, you're, you're, it was disturbing, but at the same time, it was... <laughs> it was Illuminating. Enjoyable. It was enjoyable too, so it wasn't that bad. The, it kind of bothers you being cut open, but... It, it I've was, had worse. Yeah, well, it's it was an odd experience. You're you're kind of cool in the head with it. It's you know I can say it was fucked up, but you're emotionally cool, Drake. It's it watching you know experiencing the joy again of your family being alive and then watching them being ripped apart by these things is mm -hmm. too much. So give me another D10. I'm gonna D10. I'm gonna shout across to Fang as I see him moving away on his own behalf. You back with the land of living, oi, uh... chiropractor. Ah, uh, man. That's one fucked up stone. Well, I mean... Oh, yes. It's not based on your vision. I figured that out. Oh. Also, Proximo, good throw. I give me okay sign. <laughs> oh. uh, Sphing and uh, Drake, you hear like just ever so sibilant and, and barely audible, like whispering in your head. Like I, wa I want to go home. I don't want to be in the cave anymore, guys. No, you don't. It's almost like a, a wind blowing. You don't hear any words. Cool. And anybody else hear a creepy voice? Seth looks at you and like kind of nods his head like... I it's kind of weird because I want to approach the statue a little bit because I feel like Proximo is an angry old man. I feel like there's nothing it could offer me that would actually be very tempting to him because what Proximo wants is to destroy shit like this. Uh, yeah, you know what? I am. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up to the statue too. We already know they can throw hammers at me, so it's okay. Wait, Prox. So he just walked uh, past also... you, and then he stops, and then uh, in, in your head, God you start seeing, like, uh, not this area, it's similar, but the iconography is different, and you were just like, you look like a warrior, like, uh, of legend, and you know, you've got, like, the the shoulder pauldron, going like a gladiator style, you know, you got that kind yeah. of armor on, and you're just, like, laying waste to, like, demons is the best thing you could come up with a word but they don't look like anything that you've seen here some of them are big and grotesque and bulbous others are very war warrior like in their own aspect but lots of horns and wings others are forms that mutate and change and shift as you're fighting them going through fields and fields of them and destroying statues as you climbing through up like a piles and mountains of these bodies of these demons you just feel glorious but you're also bleeding from numerous cuts and gouges and at the same time it's like pleasurable that you're feeling this you know as well as what you're yeah. you're giving back here in the normal world can i just throw a rope around this fucker and pull him away like by the neck oh you you could just grab him I and mean, he's right there. Well, I'm a little wary about getting too close to the stupid thing. Hey, so you're digging around there. Seth just reaches over and grabs him, gives him like bear hugs him and pulls him back. Okay, he pulls <laughs> it. He's still, Proximo's just still kind of standing there in a, in, in a daze. Uh, on top of this mountain of, of bodies, you see you're looking all of a sudden now at just this beautiful green farmland and it, very reminiscent of your home. And what you see and just a feeling of serenity and you kind of drop your weapon and you look down and you're no longer wearing like gladiatorial armor. You're just like your regular farmer's clothing. And then you look back up and you're standing in the fields of your farm, uh, reaching down. The soil is really good. You can tell it's very fertile. And you look over and you see your wife like churning butter. And uh, I grab an, a, a free manacle off the table and I walk over to his face and I raise my arm it's like, and I slap him uh, with dude. the free hand. <laughs> there is actually one thing I want to get at for this. The person that Proximo used to be before his family died is not who he is now. 
as soon as he gets to that and it tries to show him like the green farmland stuff that's like he is a death seeker he doesn't want this life anymore so i don't imagine it holds the statue probably doesn't understand that that life doesn't hold that much for him anymore whatever would be pleasurable and bring you back something i'm i'm guessing it with the little bit you've told me so yeah, funny. that's like, fair, actually. Share, each of you are getting senses of pleasure and pain. Definitely the battle stuff is definitely his thing now, because this is definitely up his alley. Like, the man that he was as the farmer, he's dead. That guy is dead. Yeah, but but that, the that's battle guy, from that's totally past. awesome. That's still something from your past, though, that's like, you may have suppressed it, but that's brought up things that you may your psyche has kept, like, pressed or hidden now. And that's still worth a wisdom save. A Give what? me a d10. It's a what? It was just enough to kind of put a crack in that wall that you've built up to your path, but it's enough to kind of make you uncomfortable with remembering it. And I drag, you, like, a free manacle off of the altar, and I bring it with me as, like, a nice little... Yeah, rudimentary melee implement to repay the favor. And I'm staring at him in his glassy eyes, and I raise the manacle, it kind of dangles off my right arm, and I stare for a couple seconds, and I just give him a fucking slap with my left hand instead. Okay, yeah, that he <laughs> kind of comes to your cheek sting. And I'm just holding the manacle in his face. You had options, old man. You're I thinking he, he's shaking this manacle at you, you're thinking, you hit like a bitch, because you're holding this iron manacle, and that really just stung a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> How did you even manage to make it not hurt that much? That's more, as disgusted as I am, I'm equally impressed. I gently move Drake to the side, and I just start smashing the statue at the Morning Star. Okay, so you start, the pieces are, are coming off. I mean, it, you're you're destroying it. It's it's pretty solid, but you're breaking, you know, some of the, like, the fingers and appendages of the ends of the claw. It's stone. It's not magical or anything. So, I mean, you're, you're tearing it apart, but it's pretty damn solid. Yeah. So you see him just raging on this thing and you're hearing uh, you start hearing that where that wind was kind of in your mind. You start forming words. It's like, yes, yes, you can do this and more. You can join me and destruction can be. Oh, is it talking to me? Sorry. Yeah, this is in yeah. your head. I just ignore it. It's it's now it's pissed me off. That's the problem. They tried to show me visions of my past. And now I'm mad. So he looks super. Y'all haven't really seen him this. Angry. I want to shout. Oh, it broke some out. Hit the fucking manacles that are holding the gem down. Fighting back some of the rage, I turn around and start smacking the manacles too. I, it's got to be taken out on something. Yeah, break that shit too. Just, just while you're doing it. But as he hits some of the chain, it like flexes and like, if you were to hit a chain that's hanging, how, how you would expect that to it, it moves. Oh, so, so I'm imagining because I'm imagining that this is like a floating gem covered in horrible flesh, but then there's like two chains that anchor to the ground. Yeah, the chain, they're anchored to the ground, and then, like, picture, like, a, an iron ring around the center of the stone. And so it's, like, it's floating. The chains are holding it to the ground. So as he hits some of the chain, so of course, it flexes and moves around, and it sways in the air, and then brights itself again. In, in the moment, I'm I'm leaning to the left to Seth, be like, I want to see if we can pull the gem away from the fucking statue, but we got to break it free for... Oh, shit, what's he doing? Uh, I rolled a nat one. Oh, no. Uh, roll me uh, percentile. <laughs> This is like the worst nap. <laughs> this is the worst time to roll the <laughs> oh, Okay, here we go. Thus left Proximo. 92. Damn! So you go to take the swing, and it just flings out of your hand and smashes into the wall. You're so mad, you're, you've worked up a sweat, and you just like you want to destroy this thing in one blow, and you just baseball swing it and totally like send it flying against the wall. I think this actually calms me down. Like the blind rage leaves me once I have to actually re once I realize I have to actually stop and go pick it up. Let's calm down a little bit. However, hitting it and slashing around at this thing, you, some of the flesh torn off of the gem, and you see like a green glow from the actual gem. Oh, gentlemen, I want to try to pull this stone away from the fucking statue, but it's stuck by two chains. Anyway, we can just break those, and I can try to wrap something around it. We can drag it way the fuck behind us, and nobody else has well, any horrible fucking headaches. Well, I did throw a hammer at you. We could just, you know... Grab the hammer and break the stone underneath the chains. No need to make it complicated. Every time one of you fuckers gets close to that thing, you all go glassy-eyed and we have to come up with a new plan. Proximo's been wailing at it and just walked past it to get his weapon. Nothing else has happened. All right, never mind. New plan. Proximo, you just break the fucking chains, all right? You, you have some kind of old man magic. <laughs> as soon as he says that, I'm like, the only old man magic I have is pure, unadulterated rage. Seth is like, I'll do it. Goes and picks up the hammer and he starts, like, working at the stone by the, the base where it's underneath. 
Nothing's happening to him. All right, I'm just going to cram in right next to Seth then and like try and, and smash at it with, let's see, what do I have? Uh, serrated, nope, nope. I'm going to see if I can pry it open with my dagger. <laughs> okay, is, is he's breaking stone loose, you're like digging in there trying to loosen stuff up. I guess I'll just be following them, trying to uh, not get horribly brutalized. You give me a perception check. As you're working on this, you notice behind the statue, like against the wall, it, the way the light's being cast and some of the pieces that were broke off looks like like a seam, like where a doorway would be. It threw, it's still got the intricate I'll patterns of all the artwork on the walls, but you that makes the outline of a door. For I'm gonna point it out to the gang. Hey, friends, there's a door behind the statue. Is a what? As I'm hammering with a dagger, totally you, ruining you the blade. See, you, you glance up like there's no door there. There's just a wall. Oh, God damn it. Somebody get a hammer and smack the masseuse again. I'm on it. <laughs> Attacking my allies is my specialty, apparently. Proxima walks over to where the masseuse man believes there to be no. He points it out to you. You can now see the what he's talking about. Or get, actually, you haven't rolled yet. Give me a percent. Because it was pointed out. Yeah, that's good. I try to low-key whisper to, to Seth. Oh, shit. I think they've both been taken over again. Be careful, all right? We've got to be ready. So, yeah, you see the, the... You don't know how it opens, but you can definitely... Looks like some sort of conce- or a secret door. I look for a brick in the wall that looks like it's been handled more than the others. Give me an investigation. Yeah. You look around and there's actually there's a nipple on one of the demons that if you press it in, it looks like it or looks like it could be pressed. <laughs> I hit it with my mouse because I'm not touching that. Okay, you use your weapon to push it in and you and the door slip, like it kind of goes in like about an inch and then slides to the side. I don't have a drawing for it, but it's just a little ten by fifteen room. Uh, it's a light pouring in from behind here. Uh, it looks like there's a table with all kinds of glass tubes, and you don't know what it is necessarily. Basically, it's uh, an alchemical table, and there's various, looks like there's a bunch of bottles. There are several on the table that look like they're full, and there's a, looks like a leather satchel. I'm going to look at Fang and Drake and be like, is this witchcraft? I'm still hammering with my dagger at like a, a weird anchor in the floor. Yeah, y'all... Y- at this point, you and Seth managed to get that bro- this side broke up. Do we see any change the, in the, the warp stone, whatever you want to call it, that it's, it's anchored to? Well, yeah, that it floats up a little bit more to the other side that's anchored down. So, because you've let one side go, so it kind of floats up where the chain's straight up and down on the other side. All right, Seth, um, it looks like they actually had something to forget the whole plan about killing them. Let's just not talk about that again. What did you find? Oi, Miss Seuss, tell me what's in that leather satchel. That's more your thing than mine. Yeah, Proximo is not going to be able to identify our chemical stuff, and he knows that. <laughs> Which one of y'all had the torch? I know I definitely did. We'll, we'll say there's, a, actually, you look around, we'll say that there's sconces on the wall with torches so you can light up everything. Absolutely. <laughs> As you do that, uh, it clears up some, it sets the color a little bit more normal now. <laughs> so around the, the statue itself, around the stone itself, is giving that you know, object source lighting of that that pink hue, a little bit of green mixed in. It gives a sickly purple. Fang inside you, give me a history. Yeah, definitely. This is an alchemical table. You know this, that uh, herbalists or, or sorry, alchemists are, are known. Uh, their <laughs> alchemists aren't fully trusted, but the things that they create are too helpful that people typically don't give them too much shit. There was, some people want to call them, they say they use witchcraft, others, you know, a science or something, but there are professions. There is a uh, alchemist profession. Now that Seth and I have broken free off half the anchor, can I kind of sneak around the back and lean over Seth's shoulder and, and scan the room? Yeah, you're looking around, you see the same thing. It looks like a, a workbench area. And- Do I see um, any uh, familiar herbs or like piles of dust or things that uh, we may have kept in our back room? Uh, a few things. Just you roll me a d10 plus five. So basically you find about 11 potions worth of material. Drake's eyes go a little wide. There are eight potions on the table that are like lined up like that, that are full. Say the other stuff you found there is including, you know, vial, like test tubes type, you know, containers, beakers of different stuff that would go along with that post, the materials, that 11, but there are eight of them that have liquid in Do I recognize any of them? You know they are all different, so you can't just tell by looking at one. You have to taste the balls. There's a leather satchel there. It's got like knot work edging around it. If I have the time to do it, 
I'm just are are, uh, are the potions stoppered? I just want to like pre-assemble potions and just put them in a bag. I, I don't know what they are, but I, well, I know what they are, but not specifically what they are. So I just want to like yeah, arm scoop and thump and like lay them down. And there's a cloth that you can roll them up in to keep them from like the glass. Sure, some linen or something, just so it, it's all just a, a big lump. But uh, yeah, I just I recognize enough of what I'm seeing to be like these might be useful. They might be dangerous. Uh, there's, there's a whole lot of play in there, uh, but I'm going to roll them up and just like stuff the eight potions in my bag. What about the, uh, say there's also the, what about the material leaving them? Are you going to load them up? Or- um, well, that's a good question. Do, do they look more familiar than the weird like vials of various you, colors? You don't know. What that's what my know. wife worked in. You may have see a thing here or there that's sort of recognizable, but most of this stuff are powders and different things that she didn't work with, but maybe a couple come into it. There's not a lot of, there's some dried herbs that you do recognize, but other stuff you don't know what the powder is you know it's materials for making something well thing do you recognize any of these the the, the various plants and, and piles of dust and things and he will recognize a few things here or there can point out hey this is whatever is it just for simplistic terms it's materials for if anybody makes potions i'm just going to straight up in in the moment kind of mention to to fang if nobody else is coming into the room i know several of these are useful for things my wife never taught me but uh, trust me all right we could gather these we could probably use them later grab stuff this is good or bad i'm, I'm pretty sure this may come in handy later all right this has been a long day so i'm not going to argue with you and we'll sort this out later what about the satchel? What about the stone? Satchel. Yeah, the satchel and the, and the stone. What do y'all do? Stone's still back outside. Satchel's still in here. Uh, what was... I, I assume Fang was investigating the satchel. Are you, or is that what you're doing, Fang? Yeah. It looks like old leather, but it's still in good shape. It appears empty. No, nothing? Looks like... Well, you, fucking hell, man. Use it to gather up all it, the stuff. It, just pull it off well, the shelves and throw it in. It looks like it I would have... Uh, the, the shape, it's not... It doesn't open wide like a satchel, like a deep... It would be more like you would put, like, papers... Spent, like, maybe somebody that does... Uh, like a scribe would you? That'll hold potions for now, though, right? Or I got those. No worries. Do what? I'm just pointing you to like various things on the shelf, like oh, that that glass full of leaves and that like weird tin full of blue powder. So you put them in. Did we notice anything else weird about the antechamber? Nope. Oh. It, it, that actually looked like a mundane just work. It. Wait, did, did the gem move north? Oh, right, because we, we... Yeah, did, it's just basically it lifted up. up and it's being held, suspended by the other chain. Instead of being centered between the two chains pulling it down, it's now floating up towards the... Is other. anyone else getting any weird visions? Now, everything seems fine. You, you hear whispers throughout every now and then of like, same thing, an enticing whisper of you can have the, you know, the pleasures and all the pain you want and join us. It's not an insistent incessant one, but every now and then it's just it more kind of just off-putting and disturbing or a proximo thing Seth. what do we want to do here it's still tied down we can either try to destroy it outright or do we drag it the hell away from this city i can personally attest that trying to smash it did not go well let's what hold the hell do we it. do with it this we'll we'll hold on to it for now and, and if anybody see, asks where we got it, because of what your wife was, give me a history check just in case maybe there was a story or something. Oh, sure. Let's roll that negative one again. Hell yeah. You don't know much about it. You vaguely recall some sort of stone. You don't know what it was called. You're maybe putting two and two together, but that some sort of metal you mentioned, like maybe the, if it was in a container of some specific metal, but you, you can't recall what type of metal or anything about it, but did it? Something, some stone could be contained without causing its effects in an area if it was sealed within a special container of some sort of metal. That's about all you can recall. Right, well, the old man didn't have good luck with his... I got a lot of rope with me. Um, we could take this pretty far away from the people that... It, if y'all want to help me uh, destroy that other manacle before we do it, Let's throw a fair bit of rope and, and other satchels, canvas, whatever we can find around it. Blur the light a bit and uh, we can drag it the hell out of here and, and find someone who can build it a proper box. Okay. I absolutely hate that I'm forced to agree. Not with you taking it with us. I don't like you. Okay, so uh, you're going to break the other manacle loose? Yeah, I'll just walk up and slap that shit. So, so what I wanted to try first was like securing our tether, like a long... Like, 
maybe put a canvas bag over it and then just like wrap it in, in various monkey knots around. So it's, it's just covered in rope, for example, so that we can just drag this floating core of horror away with us, like 50 feet behind the horse. Okay, so you secure it and you're going to release the other manacle. Okay, so you work it, it, get it broken. As soon as you break loose that manacle, it just falls to the ground. Well, what was an expected? Uh, I am going to do one thing. Is there any, like, cloth around here or anything? Uh, There's some Unless skin. y'all have some on you, there's nothing else. Okay. I tear off... I don't know, the bottom of my shirt, part of the bottom of my shirt, and I use use it like a makeshift glove to get the rest of the nasty flesh off the stone. Okay. You, as you peel that away, it also, it, as it hit the ground, you hear the, the tink of like, you know, a crystalline type rock, and it just kind of falls out of the, the round centerpiece that was holding it, and it's just laying there on the ground. Some of the flesh comes off, you scrape the rest away, and it's just a green glowing stone. And you wrap it up. The light dims. There's a heat to it almost. A an uncomfortable feeling holding that. Doesn't do anything to you. You're not touching it raw, so but it's it's uncomfortable just being this close to it. It's very light though. So just so I'm a hundred percent on track here, you tied a rope around it and you're just gonna drag it behind you. Yeah, I'd rather not have it in my pocket. And this thing's I would say it's about a foot, like from tip to tip, maybe, you know, six to eight inches in the center area. So it's not real big. Yeah, I'd rather just tie like a monkey's fist of rope around it and then just drag it behind us like I'm not about to have it in the fucking horse's satchel or the whatever cart we get. It can it can sit way in the back. Way, way in the back. Y'all get that done? Are y'all leaving or what? Well, I mean, we'd go back to town first, right? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Are y'all leaving this, the quote, dungeon? Fang, Proximo, you all see anything else in here? I'm... You want to, Proximo, you want to just break the rest of the statue? You were doing pretty good there for a while. Okay, y'all, he finishes breaking the statue. Y'all leave, make your way back to town now. As you get into town, you're just going to keep dragging this thing with you? So we're dragging this rope that's got a, a right. big, like, bundle at the end. So I want to stop at the crossroads, the, the one, like, big sign post of the town so that the the horrible gem is hanging off like 30 feet behind me and just kind of stand there as as a vigil okay so you're you're you basically i want to know like your people because people are like what are you dragging you're drawing it it's going to have attention drawn to it that's the thing you're not trying to hide it nope uh, if, if anybody comes like towards me, I'm just gonna try and ward them off. Be like, look, I'm gonna keep this out of town. We gotta get rid of it. We gotta take it away. Yeah, everybody's like, well, what's what, what's happening? What is what is that? Why are you dragging a rope? What what's in there? Is that a rock? You know, different people. Some of the old lady yes. comes to check on uh, uh, Proximo. Oh, you've been hurt again. Not so, again. Yeah, said <laughs> girlfriend's coming up. You know, y'all are still in pretty bad shape, so people are checking on you. What what happened? What what was what did you find? Fucking people about? spiders. Yeah. Anyone gets close to me in particular, I'm just gonna try and ward them off physically, like a the one hand out. It's, it's, we dredged it's, something up from the depth that was causing all of the horrible creatures in the forest. We need to get it away from your city so Why'd you bring it here? give us a moment pause and then we will take it away yeah there's some people that are concerned like well why'd you bring it to town dangerous why'd you bring it here i understand you say you're gonna take it. where are you taking it when are you taking it? far away we just do need to pass through very briefly nothing will come of your village which is as, as soon as we can get it through we will be gone okay so what are you gonna do for resting y'all are in pretty bad shape and where are you gonna keep this thing? do we want to just <sighs> short rest get out of town a short rest is really long <laughs> well a short rest a is what, a day as opposed to a week? Yeah, it's probably... Boy, there. Seth, come over here. What corner of the forest is the least used? Uh, I know you, 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 you frequently, like, branched out into various corners to hunt and things. What's, like, the, the crappiest corner that nobody ever finds anything? All right, listen, I'm telling you and no one else. I've got him, like, by the collars in my face. I'm going to carry this about 400 yards directly back towards where we came from. I'm going to find the gnarliest tree, and I'm going to dig down and bury this thing under some solid rock. Like, just, just put a bunch of rocks on top of it. Just long enough for us to gather our bearings, get some resources, rest for a day. And then I go back, I dig it up, and we just get it the fuck out of here. So he, he does his best at calming everybody down. The, the, any of the people that are concerned, you head out of town. Uh, I actually um, also want to talk to Seth a little bit. So, Seth, I just want you to know, you are the champion of Minoris now. They're going to look to you for their defense because you are... A champion. He doesn't appear comfortable with that. It's like, like I told Drake before, it's we do what I do what I have to do to help 
protect these people. It's not because I'm some hero. It's just the right thing to do. My family's here. People I love. It's where I grew up. Seth, I don't do this because I want to. I do because I have nothing left. I don't want that for anybody else. That's why they need you. It's kind of nods, but it's still that that reluctancy of like, yeah, I'm nothing special. So I, I just I wanted to find a place. I, I'm, I'm trying to use knowledge of the the wood as it's, as it is in this region, it, which is pretty friggin' creepy. You find um, what you're looking, whatever it is in your mind that you see, you find. So it's a, a well grown, very healthy, thick hearty like ironwood tree uh that shows like lots of green leaves uh well spread branches so like as far as i can tell any rot from otherworldly regions or even just like various fungus uh, has not touched this place and that's the roots that i want to bury this under and just yeah i find a little nook between two very thick the roots and just dig down a bit, bury the stone, and then just pile a bunch of stone on top of it, and then cover it with earth, and then lots of leaves, and then some various dead animals that were around. Okay, so that's done. So as I'm throwing these pieces of limestone down into this hole, trying to fill it up, I look up and there's just this bristly, menacing dog with teeth bared, staring down from the top of this root slash log above me, I'm like five feet up. And I, I just slowly raise my eyes up, and then once I con what I'm looking at, I look down again. And I slowly reach behind me into my pack, and I grab a ration pack, and I just kind of chuck it about ten feet off. And as I look back up, still staring at me a bit, and I just kind of twitch my head to the right, and it takes just a brief second to sniff and, and scan. And I don't move, and it doesn't move. I sit there for like five fucking minutes, and I finish my work. And I, I kick some dirt over it and I stomp it down. And I, I like put a, a big upright stick right there so I know how to find it again. And as I turn around, it's standing there in front of me. And as I, I stare into its face for the first time and just try to like play alpha, it stares right back at me. It's got the teeth bared and I start to reach for the dagger. And it closes its mouth, but it's still staring straight at me. So I don't back down, but I let go of the weapon. And I switch to another ration, and I kind of just toss it in the front. And it uh, keeps its eyes on me while it eats the whole thing, paper and all. And so I just kind of tilt my head to the side, and it tilts its head to the side, and I look back the other way. And I, I take a risk, and I look away, and I look back, and it's still there. Okay? See if it We're not gonna kill me, but, um... We never had a dog. We had pigs. It kind of wags just a little bit. <laughs> when you say we never had a dog, that image pops into your head of your daughter teaching your dog to play. It kind of makes you sad and disturbed. Yeah, probably would have liked you. There's just a, a tiny bit of softening of the intensity of the eyes. As you think about that vision again, it's like she was playing with a pup that's teaching it. But the more you think on that image, it, it's like the same color, same type fur pattern. Well, for now. I'm going to reach in and grab one more ration pack. So I have one left. I'm just going to, I'm three feet away from this, this wolf. Just going to kneel down, place it on the ground, keeping my eyes with it the whole time <clears throat> and stand back up. My scent is on that, so you know where to find me. You say that as it Still goes to eat it, instead of like as it's been watching you eating, it just kind of looks down at the food and eats it, like averts its gaze from you. Not not as in like it's trying not to look at you, but in that I'm not threatened by you, so I'll look down at my food. I risk a, a single kind of hand out to the top of its head. It just It's just eating. You can you see like the eyes look up and then look back down. That's new. Keep yourself well. And just trot back to town. <laughs> okay. So it's the next yeah. day. Y'all feeling quite a bit better. You've had, you know, some good rest. What are you wanting to do? One thing, you know how to crack my spine so I don't feel all these bruises through the rest of me? Yes, absolutely I do. I would love a bit of that because I spent the entire night sleeping on my bruises. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, this dude, you have never felt so good and so loose. <laughs> It's like, oh my, you feel like a new person. Anyway, as uh, as, as Fang finishes rearranging my rib cage, I kind of, <coughs> and then just roll both my shoulders forward for a second. You were really onto something back there. <laughs> Thanks. 
I've been telling you. Yeah, this is something that's like using your key and stuff like that. It's little visions and stuff. Something is in, in the drugs you did in there just kind of opened up your mind a bit to other things. So what do y'all want? <laughs> I guess we're going to move out and try to find people to destroy this thing, right? Yeah, i got to go dig up the, the horrible stone of shit. Well, I mean, we're all going to go with you, I think. Wait, right? actually, no, before we do that. I want to have a little powwow with the boys here. Um, is Seth around? Does he need to be? I was just checking for him. I mean, you can find him if you... Seth is the most important member of our party. <laughs> Single-handedly. Yeah. Embarrassingly. <laughs> so, so I guess if, um, if Proximo is nearby, I could just wave him over. But uh, I would do a general scan to see if I saw Seth try to give him a nod. A nod is like, hey, what's up? Or like, hey, join us. Hey, like a, a, an upward nod, meaning the come here, as okay. opposed to a downward nod, meaning right. sup, bro. I'm assuming this is, is, you want to do this before or after breakfast? After during. breakfast, before we break to do anything. Or, bef I mean, yeah. during, so honestly. So during break, so y'all are having breakfast, having a conversation. So I, I eat uh, my eggs and bacon. I'm also getting my spine reallocated. I catch sight of Seth kind of at the opposite end of the uh, the, the tavern where we're, we're gathering to, to eat. And I, I do a this quick motion to bring uh, it over. Typically, y'all are eating at the family's house of the lady you rescued. If we're having a continued Airbnb breakfast... Um, if there's anything private you want to talk about, I, like family members around and stuff that are eating breakfast. So you, if you want to take your stuff elsewhere, if it's a private conversation, otherwise family members can hear this. Yeah, so I think Fang and I... Fang does his thing. Like I, I, I reach out to him uh, about his abilities, and he does the healing that I experienced and received while we were having breakfast there with the family. Uh, and you know, I gave a pat on the head to the, the youngest, and just kind of smiled to the rest of the family, and and take a, a moment of pause to look at the the serene nature that we have continued to defend. And I kind of give a let's get the fuck out of here nod to and we catch up with Proxmo kind of out in the general square as he's having a walk of shame from one of the various old ladies homes <laughs> I vehemently oppose everything that just came out of him <laughs> yeah there is no shame there he's smiling and happy no you fuck me <laughs> <laughs> okay However, we find Proximo <laughs> in uh, various states of wander. We quickly kind of congregate. So it's just the three of us, but we gather and bring us back to, or I try to bring us back to the topic at hand of, right, we got this stone that's all kinds of fucked up and we gotta get her out of this town. My wife mentioned something about the right kind of metal or material. I can't, I, I, I don't, I wasn't the best listener. Uh, there's a material that can house this and stop its effects from happening, but we gotta get it away from these people. And if we can find a good metalsmith, then maybe we can put something around it and just shut this thing off. But it can't stay here. Oh, the same thing's gonna happen over and over again. Giant spiders, giant fuck all rats, a horrible mess. What would my character's best approximation of like a big city be? You've never been to one, right? But you, you have I have I heard mention of like a uh, metropolis? Anything? The, yeah, there. You know, there are larger city. You're looking at probably a week to two of travel. So it it sounds like it's got some legs on it. Would deep in in the woods where I've lived my whole life, but I know that there are bigger cities out there. We gotta carry this farther, otherwise it's just gonna keep causing the same problem. Proximo, I know you've got a death wish, and that's fine. But maybe in carrying this forward, you can find that. Can you can you stick with this a little longer? Maybe you'll find your reason. Yeah, I was already gonna do it. Y'all can't handle anything without me anyway. I'd argue that... with him, but I don't have a good argument. I mean, Fang, I, I already owe you my entire spine, but... So it's y'all going straight into danger all the time anyway, and I may as well go with that. That's the spirit. I'm gonna take a moment to just kind of grip forearms with, uh, with Fang. 
clasp with the the left arm. I really do appreciate what I've learned from you, physically and otherwise. Oh, the journey is just beginning. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Out of curiosity, do y'all but, share y'all's vision each other or anything? Or y'all keep nobody else is listening, right? Now I'll say that like when y'all talk about this, this was later that night. If y'all got back, y'all had dinner, said so okay. sitting off to the side, just kind of talking about your what went on, so y'all can kind of do that flashback of with the conversation. So when uh, we all we all took turns close to the stone, right? Right. Maybe we never do that again. What exactly did you see when peered into the stone? I prefer not to say. Okay. Well, wow, that's an interesting comment. Um, I also didn't like what I saw. I believe my sight took me far away. It's a life I've left for a reason. You had... You- you, you dove into memories. Um, Is that what you're saying? Not memories, but the place was definitely taking me somewhere familiar. Oh, it was just disgustingly invasive and intimate. I didn't like it. I don't want to be anywhere near it. I mean, if it weren't for all the teeth and knives, though, it would have been great. No, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. right. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of like giving you like one eyebrow raised and like the, the sneering nose. Uh, yeah, the shadow of a doubt, you can be sure that we did not have teeth and knives. <laughs> I don't know, there were a lot of teeth and knives in yours also. Just <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't say that. Uh, you definitely didn't hear that. I, you guys heard me wrong. Definitely heard me wrong, guys. I don't, I don't know what you heard, but you heard me wrong. Oh, insight yes, the insight checks with lives. advantage. <laughs> what am I making? No, for them, they can make insight checks with advantage. Uh, oh, no, don't do <laughs> that. I, do it. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> There's a button Fuck for that. It, why not? That's rolling dice. That's what this game's all about. Why would I not do that? I got a 20. <laughs> hey, you know he is completely <laughs> natural oh, to one it. <laughs> I got a three with advantage. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> shit. Totally I'm so sorry. I'll just kind of turn around and go get a glass of water. Well, we've got time to kill, so uh, how about a game of dice? I come back and throw the whole fucking glass of water in his face. Ah, oh, you bitch. Why would you do that? I just wanted to play dice. Any, are y'all sharing any more details? No one else is sharing details other than him. Are y'all want to keep doing that? Hell no. Okay, so it's a, that's the flashback to what happened last night. So now y'all are standing there gathered. Y'all have eaten breakfast. Whew. Uh, so I need to go get that horrible chunk of shit stain out of the earth and drag it away from this town before it causes any more problems. Anybody want to come with? Or are you just going to wait here and then we can move forward? I've got nothing else to do. Let's go. I'll come, you guys, to get the stone. Okay, so you all head out to get it. And you walk and you walk and nothing is looking familiar. You know that you've kind of counted your steps. You know about how far. You see familiar things, but then it's like the whole area doesn't. You backtrack a little bit. You find, okay, hey, I know where this is. Here's a marking. I remember a certain rock outcropping or something. And it was this direction. You start heading that way. And then things just start looking unfamiliar. And you do this over and over, and you can't find it. Backtrack, you find other markings that you know were close or similar that you didn't see the previous time. So you catch your bearings again, but when you head in the direction you know it was... If I use my natural explorer trait... I mean, you know your way around the woods. You know you markings. You know how to identify positioning of the sun and what features of the land are. You know your way around, and you know you're going the right direction, but then you're, you don't know where you are. Then it, you're in a different area than you were. You eventually recognize it's like, almost every time you do it, it's like you're not being able to hone in on that spot. And it's fucking with you because you know you're heading in the right direction. But then when you backtrack, you're at a different area that you recognize. You said I climbed the tree, right? Yeah. So is anything uh, distinctly fucked with? Or does it just look like woods, but not the same as we remember. No, this looks like a standard for there doesn't look anything out of place to you. You're following him. You don't know where he put this. It's like, no, fuck. Well, I'm just looking like for mostly like anything glowing or distinctly out of the ordinary or, like you know, like fucked up creatures where they shouldn't be. Nope. It looks like a standard uh, early winter Germanic. <clears throat> all right. So when we do find it, it means we have to always keep it with us. Fan tucking plastic oh hold on i'm gonna sit down cross-legged i'm gonna place my dagger in front of me and just kind of stab it into you i'm just gonna 
wait for a minute. I'm going to think about the wolf that came and found me earlier. I'm going to try and feel some of the energy around me in in the forest. Listen to the sounds. Listen to the, the changes. Try and meditate a bit on where I know I should be able to reach. Uh, are you saying if I, I'm on the ground. I know you are. His finger. Are you staying in the tree or, and what are you doing? Yeah. Do you see him just finally, y'all have been doing this for maybe two, three hours. He finally sits down, see him doing what I'm going to just keep it a lookout. I suppose. I'm just going to pull that back. I I'm going to pull that back. It's a nearby tree and keep watch. Are you being low in the tree or up high? Cause you, you're talking about Germain. This is thick. If you're up high, I want to get to a spot looking. that I can actually see, like maybe not like, you know, over the top, because I'm sure I would just see more fucking tops see, of trees. See, if you're in the middle, of, you can either be at the top of the tree to see, like, the top of the forest kind of area. If you're in the middle, you're seeing nothing mm -hmm. but canopy. If you're down one of those, if you're wanting to get where you can see through trees and stuff, because it's fairly thick in areas, you're going to be maybe in that six to eight foot off the ground. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go between the very uh the bottom and the top every so often maybe you know 30 minutes or so just okay. to make sure that nothing yeah, extraordinary uh, is happening thing in proximo give me a perception y'all aren't seeing anything uh it just seems like a normal forest uh it's you hear birds wildlife you hear you know rabbits rustling in the in the in the bush you see a deer here or there and y'all are keeping lookout nothing then you kind of look back at drake and you're like oh fuck there is a wolf walking up right behind him and it's too late it's right there on him and at that point you see it like drake you feel like something nudge you in the back you look up and it, it's it's just standing there looking it's like nudged you with its nose what i thought a lot about this last night drogo what do you know about this force i'm literally just going to be staring at him like if if he like if he sees it and he's not immediately concerned i'm literally just going to be confused and stare at him uh i'm actually when i look at drake i'm gonna like tilt my head a little bit and i'm gonna slowly put up the the okay sign in the way that my eyes are kind of squinted at him, like, are you okay? So as I'm as I'm talking to the wolf in front of me, my left hand kind of slowly moves out towards uh, Proximo and just kind of waves down, like very gentle, like just. Okay. Yeah, I'll give him like the not bad face, and I'll give him a much more confident okay sign. Yeah, I'll look. I'll look. I'll look up at Fang and give him the okay. Leaning forehead towards the wolf now, slightly yellowed eyes. I lost the marker. I saw you there last time. I'm gonna guess you might know how to get me back there. And just kind of try my best to, to exhibit like a, a non-aggressive body language, like just pulling my torso away from it and my hands up. As it looks at you, it, you, you just get this feeling of unease, not that the creature's uneasy of you, that it's conveying emotion of, of feeling unease. Yeah, I... Yeah, I got that too, boy. We, we gotta get it out of here. It's the best I can tell you. If I can find it, just gotta drag it away. You see, can you show uh, me where it is? You see him just look at you, and then he takes off running in the direction where you know it should be. Like, faster than, than you're gonna keep up. Just darts off. You just go, fuck! Yeah. Gentlemen! We gotta move! And I just, I, I try and follow him as best I can. You lose I take him. off on him. He, he's, oh. he's gone. If <clears throat> things crawl down a tree, Proxima's coming, y'all travel for like five minutes and you hear something coming from behind you as the wolf comes running from the direction y'all just no oh, shit and it looks at you confused the the wolf catches up to you and kind of stops and then turns its head and looks back at you and you feel just the emotion of like confusion it's gonna drop my last uh, ration pack give him a bit of I so what i'm gathering from this is that we're not just in a forest that's bad. The fact that we left here and then walked back in has now trapped us in this forest. You, When you've gone to backtrack, you've come to areas that uh, Drake recognizes. He's like, okay, I've got my bearings. I know where I'm at. We go this way. Then you get lost. When you come back, it's like, okay, I've got my bearings again. It's not the same spot. It's like you're being moved. It's, it's almost like a maze, but you keep coming back to different spots that are known. But as you try to get closer to stone, you're just not fine. All right. I have an idea and I hate, hate that I'm about to say this out loud. What do you guys think would happen if we all went in different directions? Do I have any sense of how object might be fucking around with our 
spatial reasoning. You you understand that something's fucking with it, and you're pretty sure that stone and its energies, whatever it is, is causing it. You don't understand why or how. I should never have buried it. I needed to keep an eye on it. I needed to be <laughs> close to it. This is. I wanted to save the town, and now it's not your fault. Any one of us would have made the same decision in your shoes. Who brought up going in different directions? Proximo. You mentioned that Drake. I'm sure you would tell you you're okay with it. You know that with them not having the training and the years of working the the forest, it's highly highly easy for an unskilled person to get lost in a forest. Even on the best of days, that would not be a good idea. More than like a hundred yards out of town and everything looks the same. Do I have a sense of how to get back to town even, or is just the whole world? No, if you try to start heading back to town, everything looks normal. You're picking up all the stuff that you recognize that lead back to town, all the markers. Nothing's changing going back. But every time you try to go you get close to what you think would be close to where you buried that stone you start it starts looking unfamiliar and you don't know where you're going what if we try to look for places that don't feel fucked up and rule them out well every the where you find that you're not recognizing doesn't feel fucked up it just is not familiar to you when you get there and when you backtrack you find familiar areas so it's like your feeling is you get close, it's changing, it's warping the, the reality of the woods where you're in a different spot than where you should be. But when you go back, you're where you recognize. So I can't use that as a compass to be like, oh, this is really weird. Yeah, We're on the right trail. Everything feels normal until you get to the point of not recognizing an area you've been to. And you clearly recognize, I mean, you find markings and stuff and you even come across them again as you do this repeatedly. And you're looking at it's past noon now. You've been doing this for like the better part of the day. And you're approaching in that, you know, two o'clock or so in the afternoon and the sun's starting. It's You know that you've got a couple hours of light left, but it all feels natural. You know it's not natural for what's going on, but there's not like, hey, this area feels, uh, there's a tingling. It feels off here. There's some, It's warping your reality, but the reality you're in is still real. So it's, it's all natural. What if we sit on our asses until something horrible crawls out of the forest so we just follow where it came from? All right, well, I'm not going to lie. That was actually going to be my plan too. I, I can't track it. Like every time I try to follow all of the signs that I built for myself, <laughs> find them in three different places, and then I end up in a circle. But I know that that fucking stone <laughs> warps things around it, and then we end up with giant fucking rats, or giant fucking spiders, or some other piece of shit. And if that comes wandering at us, then we can just go, oh, good, that bastard, just destroy it, and then go where it came from. Okay, uh, you all set up a lean-to, you know how to survive in the forest, it's gonna be a cold, uncomfortable night. Nothing new there. You I wanna have. try, while we're kind of sitting in the dark, to see if uh, Drogo shows back up. After a little while, you uh, you hear, like, howls, and then other howls being answered. You see, there's more... There's wolves in the area, more than one. And do y'all have a fire or no? I would assume you uh, have a fire on the Yeah, area. I would imagine it like a low one, if any. <laughs> you see, after a while, you see, like, eyes approaching. It's only one pair. And then you see him kind of, like, walk around the camp patrolling. You're not sure at first if this is him or not. And then after, he seems like he's checking things out and then slowly enters the, the firelight. And it's it's the same dog or same wolf. All right, gents. He knows me. All right, boy. We're fucking lost. I just kind of put one hand up against like his bowels slash neck. I don't know if you can find it. I don't know if you're going to kill me in the next day. I'm, I'm still feeling this out, honestly. But I need to find the tree. It's kind of fucking important. Hope you're listening. You pick up find a, me that tree. You pick up the vibe of just understanding, but at the same time, there's that unease and confusion still. Yeah, I'm feeling that <laughs> same. And yeah, I'm I'm equally as lost in the forest right now, awkwardly. So it makes sense. So yeah, yeah. y'all wait through the night and nothing happens. It's cold and uncomfortable. Uh, day breaks, y'all have all fallen asleep. You wake up, there's frost all over you. you. You're hurting just from the the muscle cramps from being so cold. After about an hour or so of trying again, you start hearing like shout, like calling your names being called like from far off, but back towards the way town is. Oh, wait, somebody's shouting at us from 
town? Not from town. It's basically they're come. They've come out searching. Y'all didn't show back up last. Right. So basically, people have come searching and they're yelling, trying to find y'all. Well, um, I like to stop sprinting. Yeah, let's not keep them waiting. I don't want them to get lost out here. Fucked it all up. So back towards town. So you uh, head, you or back towards the shouts. Yeah, you head towards the shouts after, right. you know, 30 or I would say 10 minutes or so. You, it's getting clear. You recognize Seth's void and y'all meet up it's like, thank goodness I found you. We were worried. What, what happened? Why were y'all? You never came back last night. We were worried. Seth, the, the fucking stone went and undiscovered itself. He looks confused. What do you. I mean, where I buried it, and I was very clear on where I buried it. I made a marker. I listened to the woods. I knew where it was. It's not letting me find it again. Okay, neither am I, honestly. So we're on the same page. Good job. You've caught up with the rest of us now. It kind of gives you that. It doesn't say so, it, but you, if it's a look of like. So weird. I'm sorry. What was what was that? Was the panic? Was it just that we no. were missing, or is there something going on? No. Just was worried. You y'all didn't. Say, you said you were going to take care of things, but you never returned. And there's a uh, there's a couple other people you recognize from town with him too. And you hear uh, from further off like a couple other shouts and him yelling back like they're here. And and people a couple other people start coming towards y'all because there was like four of them that come out looking for you. And they're all like, oh thank. Thank goodness you're here. Everybody was concerned because you've become, you spent like two weeks here. You've gotten to know these people decently. Grelda's is real worried about you and he points to you, Proximo. You notice also, uh, just because you can feel it and you, you know like the direction to look, the wolf's not that far away. He's like been shadowing you. Makes sense. Um, I'm going to try and do a very discreet kind of wave down off my back shoulder so I don't like alarm the townsfolk. Okay. Uh, yeah. <sighs> what can we do? What are our options, really? Limited. I'll uh, I'll go over to uh, you know my, my my good my good pal Drake, and uh, so uh, do you uh, have any plans to get that stone? Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I, we just spent the entire day and night trying to find the fucking stone. Um, with was obviously successful results, Joe. Hey, hey, I was just asking if you had come up with anything, all right? I'm trying to come up with something. We obviously failed fucking hard. I know these woods. It doesn't make any bloody sense. I know exactly where I placed it. I placed the marker. I studied the tree. I studied the things around the tree. I traced myself back to town. And now in the morning and through the entire day and most of the night, nothing made sense. So obviously it's the same magic -y weirdness that we all ran into when we found the thing in the first place. I'm, I'm honestly pretty pissed off. If you just want to know the, the, the full of it, yeah. These woods are supposed to work the way they always work work and then not he just like throws his dagger down to the dirt who picks it back up and brushes it off <sighs> sorry i'm not supposed to do that you're not talking to me are you yes and no <sighs> i guess the question comes down to do we a stone that doesn't want to be found is just going to stay lost but i'm worried that it's so close to this town because we were trying to move it away move on and assume that no one's going to be able to find it or is it going to throw horrible monstrosities at the town again when it sits in the ground for too long you already know the answer so how the fuck do we find it again i don't get it i think we all know my solution's gonna be as i hold up a torch can't burn the whole fucking forest man why not pretty sure it's still gonna hide from you yeah and drake you think like yeah that's a, actually your that could be a good option, but you also know that that could destroy the village. The livelihood of the village would probably could possibly be destroyed. So you could probably cause as much or more harm. Are they like a lumber or hunting village? Well, you, you, there's lots of trapping and hunting and stuff. You're looking at wintertime. That's source of their fuel for fires and cooking. Or Proximo. Any of the older ladies that you seem to be getting on with. I haven't been getting on with anybody. I don't know why everybody keeps saying that. I, I, I honestly don't care. I'm just, I'm more curious about the uh, the elders that have been chatting with you they mention anything about something similar to this any insights about the forest i mean i've been around woods long enough to know that they kind of grow their own personality there's nothing been out of the ordinary any stories that you've told from the some of the women especially girl growing up and stuff she grew up here it's 
the woods have always been peaceful. Of course, there there's wolves, things you have to be careful of that are just natural. But this these giant rats and spiders, this is something that that's never happened in her lifetime. She's been there forever. While it's scary, it's you know it's, it's nothing that's ever been heard of. Of course, there's you hear her tell standard tales of uh, you know goblins that come and steal kids and things like that. But that's what all parents tell their kids to keep them from going out in the woods and things like that. No one's ever seen one. I was going to ask Seth a small question. So, um, who would you say the best trapper or hunter in town is? <clears throat> kind of Shut chuckles up. when you clear your throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John's about the uh, the best we got, but Drake has been when because y'all have been here for a couple weeks. He's bringing uh, quite a bit. I'd say he'd give old John a good run for his money, if not a bit better. Well, I mean, I've got chuffed. two people who can follow animals might be better than one. Hypothetically speaking, uh, you buried it beneath a big tree, right? Yeah, I picked a really prominent one. And it really fucks with the stuff around it. How come we can't see that tree? Like, I get that we can't get to that tree, but shouldn't we be able to see a tree getting all jacked up on chaos magic? When trying. Maybe I'm not looking for the and right when thing. You, when you say that, you see, like, a couple of the people that are with Seth, like, make, like, a, a warding sign. Like, you're talking about magic and stuff, and they just... They give like the the horns and stuff awarding him. Just exactly right. I was I, I I tried to keep it warded by one of the strongest elements of your forest. I mean, it's not a bad question, honestly, Proximo. I don't know if I tried searching for the guardian that I planted it under. I I built most of my tracking abilities on you know the various markers through the forest to get to the same place. But do we have any way to get up? higher because that was a really massive tree like i it looked very vibrant very healthy i thought it would be the safest place to try and bury something the other direction of the town it goes up starts getting mountain you can get up you know higher elevation the other side of town. well i mean did i see anything from the top of the trees you saw forests you don't know you really you, there are some trees that stuck up higher than others there's a bunch of trees gotcha i'll, I'll tell them it's that. not like guys, there's like I was a up world there. tree that sticks up out of everything and see it for miles or guys i was up there there were a lot of trees thank you for your can input we, oh hold on master spine cracker can you show me where you climbed i want to i want to follow where he was was like climbing up a tree because he had such a good view of the area uh you climb up you find a good vantage point that you can tell that the the kid the one tree that kind of sticks up above the others you know that's your tree you you see the direction it is and you know you've gone that direction it's oh, almost okay. like a, it's Let's almost go. insulting you can see it you know that's your tree you know without a doubt that's the tree where it's supposed to oh uh, yeah Pretty sure we've been there already, and it's not there when we get there. Do we ever actually get there? When we walk away, we get back to where we came from. When we keep going, we never really get there. Given what I saw down below in that mess of a hole in the ground, I'm not surprised. But, I mean, I don't know if it just, if it stays. No, fuck it. No, I can't, I can't just leave it there in the middle of the fucking forest. We, there's gotta be a way to find it again. What if we're thinking about it all wrong? What if we are going to the right spot, but the tree itself has moved? Well, then how do you fucking find it? Oh, no, no, that's up to you, Ranger Man. I'm about to punch you in your fucking old man face. Hey. I've been spending, like, a day and a half using everything I know to try and track this fucking place down. With every, like, I, I traced our way back to town, and then I followed it back the way I've known since, like, I was fucking 12 years old. It wasn't there. It changed. And when you look at it from far away, it's there. And when you try and get close, it fucking changes, because obviously this stone just messes with your fucking mind. Can we get an approximation of how far away it is from the area where we can see it? I'm, I'm guessing, like... I, I, I spotted it maybe a, a kilometer or two off. I picked a big fuck all tree. <sighs> Drake's trying to just sit down and just plop on the ground and then think back to the the fun little like chit chats he had with with his wife near uh, dinner as it was cooking about the way she she learned how to manipulate elements. Um, kind of it was a, it was a bizarre curiosity just listening to her and and watching the door at the same time, trying to understand if there's anything desperately scathing his memory. Uh, if there's anything he can find that would help him understand how 
to traverse this forest if there's something warping the space that he's... The only thing you remember is the how unpredictable, how uh, dangerous, it just warps reality. Uh, odd things can just happen without trying. So it, it doesn't surprise you this is happening, especially... The little that she had even, she even didn't know much, but the few stories of stones that could warp reality and things like that and people using them, that's about all you know is that it, it fucks with reality. You don't know how to deal with it, why it's there, where it comes from, anything like that. At this point, I say we go into kind of a montage of you thinking about these things. Y'all all travel back to town and you and old John and some others throughout that you see that going out every morning and coming back and just the same thing over and over getting lost carving different markers into different trees trying to triangulate this stuff and but you can't nothing triangulate what if we can't find it because we're looking for it what if we just went in you understand what he's saying and there's merit to that but you can't do that you know that because you know the woods you you for you to get lost in the woods would be other than being a warp stone manipulating things, you don't know how to get lost in the woods. Now you could like, sure, Fane, you and Proximo go out because you don't know what you're doing, but you also know that they're probably not going to come back because they don't know how to get in the woods. <laughs> so I'm honestly just, after a couple days of trying to reason this out and exploring, and I'm honestly just depressed enough about how I've lost this thing that is a very real threat to a whole village. I'll give it a shot. Uh, you, you two can shout really loud, right? I'm just gonna go take a walk straight out of the town. I'm intending to find whatever first river I run into. Walking straight. I don't have a, I, that, that's the loosest target I can think of. I'm gonna ignore various markers around me. I know how to survive in the forest, <laughs> but good luck, you two. Um, don't trust any wildlife. If you run into trouble, shout your fucking lungs out. After that, I'm just gonna walk back to town and we're gonna move on because I've I fucking run out of hope. It buried itself. If I can't find it this way, they can survive. Okay, this is part of that montage of shit happening. Uh, you've got no issue. Proximo and Fane, give me survival. You got it, daddy-o. Okay, during this time, uh, we're gonna say over this, the same montage going out doing stuff, y'all doing this. It's been, it's now Thursday. It's the, uh, it's September 30th. You found nothing. Uh, Drake, you've come back to town. The other two haven't made it back. No one, no one has seen them. Well, that's either promising or bad. Old John has actually gone out because Grilled has been on him. You're looking at later that evening. He comes dragging these two back in. They're both in bad shape. They like three levels of exhaustion. Very haggard, malnourished, frostbitten because they were completely lost. Did we find anything cool where you lost? No, uh, you're scared out of your mind. That Boo! <sighs> Uh, while you were out, Drake, uh, the, you noticed the wolf shadowing, not like trying mm -hmm. to hide, but he, along the whole entire way was with you. Getting Unless you specifically you wanted it to join you at night or something, it it was always nearby though. I would I would say maybe one or two nights I would just sit in by a, a low fire, just kind of call it like a yeah. testing to see if he was listening and yeah, it always whenever you reached he... out for it, it, it showed up. It would even bring uh, a couple times small game that it caught would bring nearby and eat near the fire not not right up on it but within the edge of the light oh good you don't think so little of me fair <laughs> enough it's it's food yeah at least one of those nights as i'm as i'm sitting there uh, consuming my own minor game i just look across at the wolf and go really fucked this one up didn't i we can't re we, we can't retrieve it he just kind of looks at you you don't even pick up any kind of emotion from it it's just just looks at you like it, it's not any kind of threatening or sad it just like an empty look at you but not as if it's emotionless there's just there's nothing there to understand what to do it's just like yeah you know, it's a thing it happened you know or i guess it, the vibe you get is the uh, just disapp tough, bro. disappointment but it's in like sometimes we lose our what well, our hunt there will always be another hunt fair enough grab some sleep uh head back to town kind of recon with the the other two as they're brought in they're uh like say they're feeling pretty bad, so it's going to take a, a couple of days of rest for them to remove exhaustion. Uh, next day is Friday the 1st, and it's Oktoberfest. People are starting to decorate uh, outside. Uh, people are starting to get merry and cheerful because there's going to be lots of beer and brats. A wagon comes into town uh, with people in there. 
you can hear them before they get there. There's hooting and hollering, and there's decorated up, and a lot of people come outside to greet them. And you see Seth uh, and this some uh, another girl come running up and like, give each other a big hug, joining kind of around everybody. There's uh, of course besides the big celebration over the local lord uh, in the or one of the local lords, a pair of them in the area. And the next little village, uh, a little bit larger than this one, over about a, a day and a half away, their their two children, are, their son and daughter, are getting married. One of the girls that Seth hugged is his cousin. She actually uh, works for one of the lords and is inviting the village to come, one, partake of October Festival. Uh, festivities, as well as, you know, let everybody know the big wedding and th- to come show up. Uh, apparently, these have been two feuding houses, two feuding lords uh, for several generations, and they're combining their houses and trying to, to make peace and increase their wealth. Uh, this would be the Lindsays and the Whiteley. Do any of us know anything about them? No, or you no, are from cool. this area. Uh, Drake, you've probably heard the names. You don't know anything about them. But you you know that you've heard of right yeah um, maybe some shipments that came in to my town either from one or both. Uh, mm-hmm. See, so yeah, the Lindsays are known for uh, their wood and wine export, and the Whiteleys for hemp and ale. Wine versus ale and wood versus hemp. But everybody's been invited for festivities and the wedding. Unless there's something specific you're wanting to ask these people, it's going to be they've come in. Uh, there's festivities are starting a couple of days because the wedding's going to be in like a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so y'all rest up a few more days because of the shit y'all been lost in the woods, get nursed back to health, and uh, everybody travels that direction if that's where y'all are wanting. To yeah. So I was trying to I was trying to grab Seth uh, when all of this news landed because we were just coming back in from basically a loss. Uh, as all of the, the the new hubbub is happening, I just wanted to kind of grab him to the side, be like, "Oh yeah, what what do you know about?" These two families, this is a, a whole lot of new rabble. Uh, they're lords, like, so uh, standard uh, arrogance that comes with wealth and uh, notoriety. But uh, we get lots of our wine and ale, uh, hemp. They, uh, we don't really need to deal with the finer woods that the Lindsays do because we've got plenty of hit of a higher craftsmanship. They do a lot of trading and uh, pretty much the most wealthy in this area. How far away is the, the festivities from where we are now? About a day and a half. Day and Over in half, Prinwell. Day and a half. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm most worried about. So, yeah. So he mentions the town. You've heard of it, Prinwell. Oh, man, that's way down the trail. I don't think I've ever been that far. Drake's doing just some, some map math in the back of his head. Okay. Well, at least, yeah, this should be far enough away. Thanks, Seth. Um, definitely. Uh, enjoy, enjoy the us. ale. Enjoy the wine. We all be joining us. Should be a good time. Probably. Probably. I have some things I want to check out briefly, but then I could I could follow the, the, the crew down the road. I'll make sure he gets there. So Seth seems extremely happy. One he like really happy to see you see the joy on his face with his cousin there. And then the the thought of not only uh Oktoberfest foods but wedding foods. He looks r- really happy and excited. Not so much about them getting he doesn't care about them getting married, but the wine and ale and food is going to be available. Now the um, I've got this lingering doubt about what we're trying to leave behind in the forest without thinking about it. So I just I want to spend like maybe a half a day keeping the rear guard before I I finally say all right fuck it and move on. During this whole time you've been going out and searching during your walk aimless walk and the, it, nothing is out of the ordinary standard wood stuff. Other than any time you try to go back that direction you get turned around at a certain point, but it's never the same point. That's really going to fuck with me for the rest of my character until he finally dies. Yeah, Uh, that's that's where Drake would leave off is attempted over and over and over again and and gave it one last shot and couldn't find buried treasure. Then, yeah, we'll we'll move forward or he'll move forward towards the uh, the village, kind of all shuffling off towards a larger town down the road. So uh, y'all travel. It's uneventful. You get there. There's all kind it's much larger village uh the, it, while not a city it's a larger village by by far uh the housing is much nicer you can definitely tell the woodwork here is exceptional there's all kinds of garlands and things hung out there are uh, uh decorative type kegs there are big like wooden mugs on top of posts everywhere it's all 
Oktoberfest here. Uh, the standard, you know, girls got their uh, dresses on. They're green and white with the uh, the bodice uh, prominently pushing everything to the forward. Uh, lots of beer being passed around, sausages and brats. Everybody's, you know, the, the wedding's coming up in a couple of days. So y'all have time to like look around town, get to know and meet people. You're looking at the, the predominant people you meet. Uh, Harold Lindsay is the groom. Asking around, he's a young man, no no known enemies, young noble. He enjoys falconry and archery. He loves the, the Nissa. Nissa Whiteley is the bride. Uh, loves her very much. It's a, anybody talks about, he's always talking about her and doting over her. She seems to be about the same over for him. Uh, Harold Lindsay is the father of the groom. He's the local lord. Uh, Frederick Lindsay is a brother of the groom, uh, the older brother, or younger brother, excuse me. Uh, Lorik Whiteley is the grandfather of the bride, uh, and Luther Whiteley is the uncle's bride, or yeah, uncle of the bride. The father, apparently, you've learned he died in a hunting accident several years back, so that's why he's not here. Uh, unless there's something specific you want to do, other than eat and drink. Y'all have been put up at a place. Day of the wedding comes. It's a, it's a gray af- autumn afternoon in the village of Prenwell, but the residents are all excited and festive. After years of petty feuding, two of the village's most prominent and influential families, the Lindsays and the Whiteleys, are finally making peace as a young noble master, Harold Lindsay, takes the beautiful Lady Nissa Whiteley's hand in marriage. The entire town is in attendance, and you all find your eyes moist with tears of joy and the lank, uh, as the lanky Justice Gerald or- orates uh, in a booming voice. And as they consume this wine symbolizing the union, may Lady Nyssa and Master Harold become one, whereby only death itself may come between them. The young couple give each other a loving kiss and begin drinking from two ornate goblets. Cheers erupt from the crowd. The newlyweds look at each other blissfully before you notice Lady Nyssa starts to cough and sputter. She drops her cup of wine and it smashes, spilling the dark contents across the ground. Suddenly, hooded and robed figures rush from the surrounding forest and all around you, the joyful cheers begin transforming into screams. To your left, you see Farmer Toll uh, Todd's bald, sunburned head gets smashed with a large mallet, and with a revolting pop, it explodes like a rotting pumpkin, splattering those around him with skull and blood. You're horrified to see more figures rushing through the crowd, decapitating and disemboweling guests indiscriminately. Turning back to the newlyweds, you see one of the robe figures grip Master Harold's neck in what appears to be a uh, tentacle. Suddenly, Gerald, uh, Justice Gerald desperately pummels at the assailant with his fist, but with a sickening crunch, the figure tightens its tentacle, popping the young nobleman's head s- savagely from his torso before running back into the forest with its bloody prize in its clutches. As you reach down for your daggers, uh, your hands find only empty scabbards as you now remember how weapons were banned from the ceremony. Panic grips the crowd, and the robe figures continue to uh, rip through the Wedding courtyard. I'm gonna go find my morning star. He, there's all oh, kinds man. of stuff. Oh man, where was the weapons desk? <laughs> this was. I'm I gonna start. It, it's a wedding to... ceremony. There's been festivities. No one would. No one's armed. You would have just left wherever you're staying. Your weapons and stuff would either been, you know, in your cart or mm-hmm. you know, left yeah. where you're staying because it's a wedding ceremony. You're not gonna be like garbed for a combat. Uh, interesting. I have that now. Now there are improvised things. There's chairs. There are. You know, I guess I guess I'm gonna go WWE on these guys. There's steak <laughs> knives. You, there's utensils and things around. You could get knives for daggers. You could pick up candlesticks for club or candlestick holders for club. There's improvised weapons doing anywhere from a D4 to a D. Mm. I want a candlestick and a fork. Okay. And we're gonna do a wheel this shit. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely driving for something serrated. So I'm sticking to the fist yeah, that you, I yeah. currently possess. Being so on is not exactly a fucking penalty for you. <laughs> Listen, all right, not everything's a penalty. Okay, now this so y'all are grabbing. We, we watched the the groom get killed. Yeah, yes. this this so some robe figure comes up and it looks you're not positive because it's it's kind of been what you saw. But it looked like his arm and hand looked like it was a tentacle that wrapped around his throat and then squeezed and popped the head off. Yeah, we've definitely not seen anything weird in the last month. Uh, 
No, but this is like still, it's something. While well, you've seen weird stuff, uh, a human with a tentacle arm. Yeah, that would still be new. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'm I'm scrabbling for like the, the nearest pair of dagger like objects, which are probably yeah, like steak knives. Knife stuff, knife type things are going to do D4s, candlesticks, breaking a leg off a chair are going to be D6s for cl like club damage. Okay, uh, one cultist rushes and uh, uh, rushes you, Proxima. How do you feel about that, Proxima? Pretty good, hey guys. I hit five points of damage. Nice. He says as he takes a knife to the chest. And it's your turn, Proxima. Yeah, I'm going to make an attack. I'm just going to beat him over the head with my candlestick. Yeah. That's an eight. Ooh! Uh, Drake. I'm scrabbling for two serrated eight. daggers. Yeah, you've got you've got two steak knives or something. Um, Who's near me? It, 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 am I anywhere choice. close to... Say, this is theater of the mind, and it's a it's just a chaotic melee, so take your turn. All right, I want to scrabble across the table, try and stab a cultist one once, and and then cultist 11 who is in combat with proximo yeah as i scramble across the table i find his jugular just like directly with my yeah. left arm okay so i leave that steak knife just in his neck as he's like gasping out on the the, the floor okay. um and then I, I reach across with my right arm uh to try and hit the one that proximo is engaged with Ugh just too far you like the table gets in the way and you just can't so i just end up rolling closer to him fang it's your go i'm gonna you can just clobber imagine. cultist 13 he went after my boy that's oh. Oh. absolutely oh. Is that that's, a, that's right to the throat i'm Jeez. probably just gonna absolutely you know like crush his his neck with uh like in the the, the most recent uh Judge Dredd, where he just fucking hits the judge in the neck, and he's like crushed his pipe and gasping for air on the ground. Top of the order, Fane. Oh, now I have to go for Cultist Five. Uh, I repost. Oh, I meant to roll that Jesus. on him. I just did six. Just That's absolutely wreck him. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I actually like slam his head with it, and I don't just stop with his head. I I push his head to the table beneath us and just splatter his bones and brains all over the place. That, that's awesome. They they fall. You see, uh, after those, you look around and the there's just like a lot of dead villagers there. And you see the rest of the cultists are just all fleeing into the woods. Uh, at this point, Frederick Lindsay rushes up to y'all with hysteria in his eyes. He's like, his head's been taken for the love of all that's good. My brother's head. And he's just freaking out. And then you hear a strong voice booming out. He's like, this was your doing. And you turn and you see Herod Lindsay, uh, the father of the groom, stabbing an accusatory finger at Luther Whiteley, the bride's uncle. You've never approved of this marriage. And now you've, you've robbed Brig uh, these ro robed brigands have taken my son's head. You and your kind will pay. And then Luther retorts, liar. It was you who tried to poison Lady Nyssa. I will make you pay in blood if it's the last I do. If you do not retract these accusa accusations. Uh, then a, they, there's a scuffle just starts out at that point and between the two. And the people find members from both families start pulling them apart. That that was the main thing. Say this is a good stop point if you want to. Otherwise, it will be mostly investigation stuff probably. Absolutely. The first thing I want to do is go slink onto the... The table, Lady White spilled her wine and uh, investigate. Yeah, I'm like, is she dead too? <laughs> yeah, you check uh, the wine. Uh, it looks like it was poured from a rare bottle of Bethany Red. And checking around, it was provided by the Lindsay family. Dumb question. You so, so drink it? Uh, I'm going to try to do everything but drink it. See if it, you know, yeah. Just kind of rotate it in the glass. want to want to make sure that I can like get all the uh all the easy all the, guesses out of the way all the notes there's some some cherry some walnut some treachery <sighs> uh, Make sure she's, I, she's not dead yeah didn't she get out of here no she's no, i thought she passed out yeah she passed they say she's not dead though. people have rushed huh. you know her family's rushed to get her you can see she's starting to come too i'll i'll dab it on the end of my uh my finger and look over at Drake and be like, all right, let's find out how poisoned this is. And I'll just, uh, oh, I'm ready with Hannah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll put a, you know, put some of it in my mouth. It's actually just the hint. If, if you, if your character happens to like wine, just a tiny bit of flavor is like great flavor. And then, uh, after a few minutes, the aftertaste has got it. Your tongue is numbs and stings a little bit. So you, you reckon there's something in it, but it's not like it's nothing that you're gonna have to roll like that. You can tell that it's okay. at first it's like, hey, this is so if I really if good. I had yeah, but then it's there's there's a sting and not a so, typically associated. Right. So like if I had actually had more of it, it wouldn't have been great. 
possible. And as I'm, I'm watching him, he doesn't like fall to the ground for a half hour. <laughs> I'll, I'll look over at you, Drake, and I'll be like, mm, something's definitely wrong with this wine. Yeah, in, I it's... can't feel my tongue. Yeah, so it's provided by the groom's friend. <sighs> That's one of the accusations. Anything you want to look for, Drake? I did the wine thing. But while it... Uh, I, w- I was about to do the same, honestly, but then you went and like gobbled it all down. Those are the family crests, too, that are around. I'm absolutely going to go and see if Lady White is okay and if she needs any, any chiropractor in her life. I'm low-key scanning groups got- for people who aren't running in panic. The cultists appear to be the only ones that were running, and they've they're gone out into the woods. You've got uh, dead villagers and dead cultists laying around the area. Uh, as you go check on Lady Nissa, and she's in and out of coherency and seems mostly in shock and just whimpers repeatedly. Oh, my poor sweet Harold. Uh, the the grandfather, the bride, he's quiet and emotionally despondent, and he's when he does have any kind of action, he's fretting over the welfare of his granddaughter. You say Lady Nissa was coming coming to? She's in and out of coherence. It's from, okay. You know, she's been poisoned, and then the shock of her troth just having his head removed in front of her. Yeah, that happens. Like you do. <laughs> let's let's go talk to um, Mr. Herod Lindsay and uh, Luther uh, separately, because apparently they can't have a conversation in the same room. No. So maybe one at a time. Drake, who are we talking to first? You're the you're the face here. All right, listen, I'm not I'm not as beautiful as you. I'm trying to wonder if we need to talk to anybody at all. We followed the whole fucking retinue down here for the wedding. We got our food. They want to fucking kill each other and. That's their business. A reason that you could find to help solve this if it isn't to innocent villagers from getting clobbered and I have to figure out what's going on in here. There's obviously something to gain from all of this. Do I feel like anything is particularly messed up besides the entire situation? So we already got various leads that the families didn't like each other and then the bride seemed to be poisoned but then wasn't and then a whole bunch of people showed up and decapitated the groom but then ran away. I'm, I'm more trying to feel out like the same bullshit shittery that humankind is doing to each other in this world or do I feel like something else is going on? What little you know of lords and and wealthy people, there's all kinds of backstabbing going on always. Someone's trying to get the leg up. Now, while you've all heard stories of your versions of Romeo and Juliet kind of stuff, you've never witnessed anything like that, but Wealthy houses trying to fuck the others over, sure. But you've also heard plenty of stories of wealthy houses combining their houses for mutual gain. So Mm -hmm. that's not unheard of either. What doesn't seem quite to make sense is why if one family was trying to poison the other's child, why would a bunch of cultists attack and kill the other side? Unless just so coincidentally that both sides were trying to harm the other on a day of celebration and combining their houses doesn't really make sense, but you don't know, you know, those kind of dealings really. It's not your lifestyle. It, it doesn't seem like that would be a uh, beneficial move for either house to do. Tell you what doesn't sit right with me, Fang. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Fucking third party that shows up, makes off with the groom's head, isn't bothering with the bride, and doesn't seem to be related to either house. <sighs> So, so I feel like we didn't get enough free meals before we got here. Um, Harold accused Luther. And Luther is the patriarch of which house again? White. Luther is the uncle of the bride. So the uncle, the girl that just got poisoned, Mm -hmm. was supposed to be in charge of all of this mess. Uh, There wasn't any one person that was in charge. This was like different people doing, they're trying to split, respond, okay, this side, you know, you're going to provide dowry. Uh, this side, we're providing the wine, you're providing the food, you're paying for the dress, we're paying for the tables. It's 
Oh. Back and forth, there's not one person that was planning it. Do we see anyone else exhibiting symptoms that the bride did? Nobody else drank out of that was like a bottle for the, the couple. Is it still there? That's what uh, Feng was checking out. He, he tasted some of it and could tell that there, there's something in it that's not healthy. Not strong enough, apparently, to kill her, or she didn't get a big enough gulp. I'm I'm prepped to, to try and Scooby-Doo this shit uh, next time. Next time. <laughs> <laughs>